Welcome to your first edition of Happy Hour Chicks. I'm your host, Frank Nitty. You know how I do it. I appreciate you tuning in. And we're going to have some outstanding um, issues we're going to cover today and questions. And it may be something our viewers are really interested in. Of course, make sure that you uh, subscribe and like. And of course, uh, put anything down in the comments and we'll be glad to answer it. And whoever, make sure you address who you want that to be addressed by. Um, we got half pint here to my left. Oh, yeah. And she's ready. And uh, we also have Alicia as well. Uh, you know, I'm so excited about this show, and um, it, you're gonna, I think you're going to like it, and we want your comments. But let's get this thing started. First thing I want to talk about, ladies, is it okay for brothers or men or boys to wear skirts? I've been seeing these skirts. I don't know if they're kilts or they're skirts, but they're labeled like skirts. You know, it, I remember growing up. You had kilts, you know, for the Scottish or the England people. They will, I think it was Scot Scotland or something like that that was wearing those type of skirts, you know, but they didn't call it, call them kilts. But they, re they refer to these particular type as skirts. Um, I'm going to start with half pint. I want to know what she got to say about it. Again, it's happy hour with chicks. It's about what the ladies think, not me. So I'm going to pass it on. Here we go. Well, this is what I think. Kilts, I'm fine with that because that's all I know, if it's a kilt. However, to each is on. That's, that's my opinion on it. To each is on. Um, I like the kilts. I like the Irish dances or whatever dance that you're trying to do in a kilt. I'm all right with that. But right now, it's all good in the neighborhood. Half height. I think so. <laughs> well, um, as far as the kilts, they are um, very manly. So when they were wearing them, it was very manly. But now with the skirts, to me, that's just really feminine. You can do what you want to do. That's fine. But as far as my opinion, if I'm attracted to a guy, he's not going to be wearing a skirt. That's just not my thing. Um, but, you know, like Half I said, it's each his own. But for me, that doesn't work for me. And um, I don't think I would want my son walking around in a skirt. Um, that's just not what I would want him to portray. And that's not what I think of when I think of a manly man. Kilts, I can see that being kind of manly because of the way it's set up and how the tradition was. But this is just like a fashionable thing. I guess if you are a guy and you're going to a club and, it's, you know, you're a young guy, and that's what's in. That may work. Women may be attracted to that. But for me, that's just a no-go for me. No. So you're saying you're not attracted to a kilt or a, a, a skirt? A skirt. A skirt. Yeah. And I agree with that. Yeah. Now, the kilt, like I said, to each is on. It's, it's your opinion. Um, it's all good in your neighborhood. Uh, however... I'm half pint, so I'm either going to give you the whole thing or I'm going to give you half. I'm going to pass the mic back to my host. Well, y'all heard it from the ladies. First of all, you'll never catch your boy rocking any of that. You know, I'm fresh I'm fresh to death. I keep it 1,000, you know. I don't believe in the skirts, but the ladies, you heard from the ladies because it ain't about me. If the ladies like it, I guess that's what it is, you know. Um, you know, there's some other things. I know it's the beginning of the year and school has just started. What? So all the parents out there are racing crazy, right? Getting school gear, uh, getting uh, notebooks, laptops, book bags, all these kind of things to get ready for the school year. But my question is this, and I know that the viewers want to know, public school or private school? I mean, I want you guys, you ladies, to tell me, I mean, what, what's the best thing? We're in the South now. Let's talk about the South. We don't got to talk about nowhere else. You can include that, but we're in the South. We are in Atlanta, Georgia. So let me hear what you got to say. Once again, this is Half Pint. We're talking about private school versus public school. 
It all depends the where you're from. In the South. I love children. I want the best education for the children. However, the teachers, the administration have to be on point of what they're trying to organize in their school for our children. And that's all children. We are all equal. However, for our children, there has to be some type of stability. Uh, uniforms is just not going to do it. Oh, I can just wear a uniform, but is that going to help the academic part of their minds, of their growing, of their perspective of themselves, uh, from their neighborhoods, wherever they come from, south side, east side, west side, wherever in Georgia, um, or just south period. I want the best for the children. I am an advocate for children because we do not know what type of homes these children come from, and that is dear and near to my heart. I'm all about public school because all children can't afford private school. It depends on what we call private. What do you think about this, sis? Well, um, I am an advocate of public school, um, especially if you pay taxes, you pay property taxes. Um, I'm sending my child to public school. Um, now, you do have to be a part of public school as a parent. It only works if you're in it. Um, your teacher, your principal, they can't do it alone. Um, but I do believe that the principal, that um, unity there, that um, those employees there, they set the tone on how things are going to work in their school. And you know that uh, a good school is usually under control by a good principal, by a leader. If there's, a, if there's not a good leader of that particular school, your school is going to fail. Because your teachers, your employees like to follow a leader. If it's a good leader, they follow. If they are studious, if they are concerned about how their teachers come to work dressed, if they're concerned that they're going to be professional and treat their students right, then it's going to be an overflow into the teachers in each classroom. There's not going to be a fail there because they know in order to keep this job, they have to meet these standards. Yeah. Um, and also, if there's a requirement for parents to be included in the school, whether that's participating, volunteering, um, going there just to help out, you know, if they can, um, I am aware that some charter schools, they require that each parent put in so many hours of volunteer time. I know that some parents, they work, they work crazy schedules, different things. But your kids are important, just as important as it is to take off to go to a doctor's appointment, to go to a dentist appointment. So take the time to go see what's going on in your classrooms, and you're not surprised when your kid go, you know, comes home, talks about how bad the schools are, a teacher did this or did that. You will already know. Um, and everybody will know that you're a concerned parent. So the first thing they're going to say is we're going to make sure that Sally is going to do well because I know her mama's going to come up here and ask us what is going on. Um, so you have to make them work hard if they're not, and you have to show that you care. If you don't care, they don't care. It is your child. You have to show that you care. So um, I, like I said, I'm a big fan of public school. Private is great, but... There's nothing wrong with public, especially when you're paying your taxes. I want to get my money's worth, basically. I'm not going to pay for some other kids to go to school and send my kids to private school. I, I'm just not going to do that. So it's going to work for me because I'm going to ensure that it works for me. You got something to say? Go on. Yes, I do have to say something. I take my shades off, y'all. At the what I'm saying, it, like I agree, we th this is a great, 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 great topic right here. Uh, it's not about the clothes. It's not like I said. It's not about the uniforms. It's about the mind and what we're putting into our children's mind. Uh, if the head is not right, the whole body's out of whack. So that means if the administration ain't on point, right. that's what y'all say now. Point then the whole body's out of whack. There has to be some stability in that administration because that's where it starts at. Whether it's a principal, a secretary, a counselor, a teacher, 
because when you set the standards in the public school, it's public school. That means anyone is welcome in the public school. So let's get the minds right instead of the clothes right. Get the minds right and get the clothes right. And let's, I mean, get the minds right, excuse me, uh, and, and the head right so we can build our schools from the community. Thank you. Hey, my girl's here. <laughs> okay, now, 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 we're gonna finish this up when we come back. We're gonna take a break and we're gonna get back on this because Frank Needy got a few more questions. I'm not gonna let them get out of here. I, we got we got half pint and Alicia riding real hard on this public thing, but I, I I'm not feeling what they're saying. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna get back on this. All right, we'll see you in a minute. Hey, this is D Town. Thank you for watching Happy Hour Chicks. We need you to subscribe and watch us on YouTube. All right, we're back. Okay, public and private schools is a discussion. Okay, Half Pine and Alicia, all about public. Just joining us is Brandon. She's, all, she's also on the uh, Happy Hour Chicks team. And I'm going to get a mic to her next. But first, I want to say something, because private school is not just about the clothing. In, a, in Georgia, in the South Pier, we have a problem with the, the education process itself. I mean, it, uh, kids are failing. And, um, and I think that the foundation you need is in private school for your, from kindergarten to fifth grade. You get that foundation solid where the kids can focus and concentrate. It's really bad in these schools in the South. Not every school is bad. I can't say every school, but the majority of them are. Now, I'm going to pass the mic to Brandy first so that she can, she can give her uh, comments on this so that we can know how she's feeling. Hold one moment. Here she is, Brandy. Well, I'm, I'm going to have to agree with you on the private school. Only from personal experience, being in the public schools and working with some children, I think it's too many children per teachers. So they're not getting as not enough attention. And um, with private school, I think there's smaller groups, it's more focus. Um, and I'm kind of going to have to agree. If you can afford the private school, that's the way to go. My kids are in public school, but um, if I could, they would all be in private school because I do prefer it. I don't hate private school. I don't. My don't kids, give it a mic. Give it a mic. My give it a mic. kids started. Um, they started in private school. They had, you know, they had their start in private, um, and then they went on to public. Um, so I, I don't disagree with a private school if you can afford it. Um, but what I am saying is don't forget about our public schools because um, more of our kids, more of our society attends public school. They don't attend private school. So let's fix that because those kids are our future. They'll be taking care of us. They'll be making um, rules, regulations. Those changes will happen. So yeah. when you think about that, the majority of our kids – are in public school. There's nothing wrong with sending your kids to private school if you want to do that, but to me it's important to fix it. Well, what I'd like to say is that the private school, I have nothing, I have nothing against the private schools as well, but if we're going to be private, let's all be private. You know, let's not divide. Let's all be private. Whether we can afford it or not, let's make it affordable. Mentally, physically, and all the above, A, B, C, D, and uh, above. That's what we do. So I'm about to pass it back to uh, New York over here. And on another note, when you know you have no choice but to have your children in public school, you have to work with your kids at home. Right. I think that's, yeah. that's the key to a lot that's of things. It. We could complain about the public school right. system all yeah. we want, right. but mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is learning starts at home. Right. That's, that's the first it. place where they learn, that's and home. that needs to be consistent in the households. Right. And right. what a lot of people don't know about public, private school is a lot of them have financial aid programs that you could apply for and you could get assistance with and hopefully cut your tuition in half because that's an option also for some people. But public school, I think, is good enough if you're the type of parent that is working with your children at home. I mean, from 
before they go to school to when they are in school. And now that everything's becoming computerized, keep constant updates on your children. I mean, they're making it easier and easier to just know everything that's going on with your children. So public school can be good enough if the parents are active in the child's education also. You can't expect you can't expect the school system to be able to teach your kids everything. Mm -mm. They can't. They can't. It's not. It's just unrealistic. They can't. So you heard it from the ladies. I mean, again, we sum it up. They're saying you need to be involved. Is what they're saying. And ladies saying you need to be involved, even if it's private or public. And if you got the money, um, you heard from Brandy. I agree with Brandy. You need to go private. Uh, just in the, in the beginning years, uh, just to get that solid foundation um, because it's so much chaos. I, and my problem is this, uh, ladies, with the public school is that, I mean, no one is making it fair across the board. I mean, we're all paying the same amount of money, the same taxes are being paid no matter what county you are in. And uh, we're talking about Georgia, so from Clayton to, to Gwinnett to Henry to DeKalb County, there's a difference in the scores. But yet, the, money, the same money is going there. So there's, there's a problem there that needs to be addressed. And um, I think that's going to have to be taken up with our Congress people and uh, the people that run our, run our state. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we, we heard that. I think that was awesome. Ladies, we're going to go into something else. OK, we're going to change gears. You know, we're going to go from first to fourth gear. OK, so Jay-Z came out with a new album, right? The 4.44. And everybody's rocking it, right? It's, it's topped on the billboards and stuff already, but we didn't expect any less from Jay-Z, right? Because the brand is in New York, so she know, right? <laughs> but here's the deal. Here's the deal. It, it sounds like an apology letter to me. And you are ladies, and, and his lady is Beyonce, the biggest star in the world, right? And, and I just want to know, I mean, would that be enough for you? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> And if I'm a Beyonce, I don't know what you're doing cheating on me in the first place. Exactly. I mean, Beyonce, come on now. <laughs> no, I don't think that's enough. I mean, she came out with her Lemonade song. He came out with his, his apology to it. And, you know, at times you see them on TV always together. And I question if they're just trying to make some money off a scandal or if they really got problems. Who knows what they really got going on? Who knows why they really doing it? But um, for me, I don't care how many songs you sing. That's just not enough. An apology through a song, that, that's just not the way to go. Um, like you said, I don't know what they're doing. There's so many. Hey, I'm a Beyonce. You know, if you look behind, the behind, oh, the behind, look at the background. Check out all the background here that we're sitting at right now. Yeah. Everybody got a Beyonce, everybody got a Jay-Z. However, um, apologizing through a song, I just don't agree with. Um, I, I, you know, I, I mess with Jay-Z. I like his old school Jay-Z. Uh, you know, you, you New York, you know, rats in the back. You know how it go, I'm half height. But uh, that's just how I feel, and uh, you know, shout out to them. They got to do what they got to do uh, to build their empire, and and that's all I have to say on that. I'm gonna pass the mic to my girl over here, Alicia. Um, public song, no, that's not gonna do it for me. Um, it's I want to keep our life private, so the first thing I think of is like Brandy. You're just trying to make more money. You already have lots of money, but if that's what you want, go for it, do it. But for me personally, an apology through a song, okay. You know, that's just not gonna do it. That's not enough for me, especially who I am, you know. I'm who I am, and what? You gonna cheat on me? Um, no, but I definitely know that for each marriage, it works for people differently. So different things work for different people. I would never say across the board, if this person does this, this person does that, you should leave. No, that's not how it works because everybody has different dynamics. Um, so for them, she can forgive, possibly she can forget or whatever, and she can move on. It's not the end all for everybody. Everybody has that little thing um, that you're gonna say, 
that's it for me. Um, so she might be happy with that. That's good. But for me, that wouldn't be good enough for me. Well, you heard it from the ladies. But in Jay-Z defense, as a dude, and that's the thing about it, because I'm a dude on the, ladies, on the ladies' panel, right? And I'm sure, I'm sure that, because Beyonce is like 100, and Jay already did what he had to do to get back in the game, but then this was just, this was just icing on the cake. I see this album as icing on the cake, saying, hey, I want the world to know that I love you and that I care about you, and that I want the world to know that I apologize, and that I, I want the world to know that I did wrong. I want before the world, I'm going before the world, let them know that I was wrong and you was right. And that's what I see on the album. And I think it's a, I think it's a good thing from a dude's perspective. And uh, of course, women look at things differently. But from a dude's perspective, I think it's great. He wants to keep his woman, and I ain't mad at him. Anybody got anything they want to say on that? Y'all good? I'm good. I All right. I think you're being a real male chauvinist. <laughs> chauvinist. Yes, because this is happy hour. And there's three of us that are happy. <laughs> and for you to say, well, being a man aspect, you know, hey, and what are we going to do? I think it's a good thing. However, no. <laughs> Come to me correct. Come to me as a man. Talk to me before you even make or thinking about making the song, and then we can go on from there privately. But however, maybe that's what they want to do. But I hope, I hope that he's sincere about it. Z, you know, you know how it goes, Jay. Z, you know how, you know, you know. What you think? Because that's your homie, girl. You know, that's your homie. We passed it to New York over here. On his defense, she did come out with Lemonade first. So the whole public thing, she did put it out there first. Right. You know, so him but coming back. ain't good with no sugar. <laughs> <laughs> so him coming back, him coming back with his apology, I mean, it just kind of complimented it. But in the meanwhile, you, they're sitting over here having babies, looking like a happy family at these basketball games together. So like I said, who knows what's really going yeah, on. Let's can't be deceiving. Day, it's really business. none of our business. Yeah, that's, that's them. At yeah. the end of the day, absolutely. Well, it's their business and our business because <laughs> this is happy hour with chicks <laughs> because that's what they do for a living. All right, moving on, but staying on the same topic. But one thing you can say, it was nice to hear the lyrics that Jay-Z was putting out on, the, on his record or the CD or whatever they call it today, and it was pleasant. I mean, because I've been hearing some stuff on the radio that youth are saying. I mean, what do you guys, or you ladies, I'm sorry, what do you ladies think about the lyrics in the young music today? If you can understand them? If you can make out what they're saying? I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> and all I can say is, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I did that too. I'm, sorry, <laughs> I'm like, Okay, so it started off with a nice beat, but and then when he started talking, he lost me. So I just can't do the, the music today. I don't feel like it, it, it's not what we grew up on. You know, when we grew up on, they had a story to tell. Now, they just talking just to be talking. It just, there's no meaning to it. There's no message in it. I mean, what's the message in that? All my friends are dead. Who? Really? <laughs> That's what we're thinking about? Okay, so tell me more. Back it up. You know, how can we prevent this? Whatever. So push me to the edge? Push me to the edge, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. I don't know. Well, half pint back again. I found out, I, you know, that song, you know, I was bouncing to it. I love the beats of their song. These, these, you know, the, the young people got some beats. Let me tell you one thing, what they're trying to say, young people, all they want you to do is listen to them. But yes, I was the same way. I was like, oh, all the friends are dead. But wait a minute, hold up. Oh, what friends? Then, you know, by me talking to the youth or the young adults or the youth, younger um, teenagers or the young adults, they told me that that song means all their all their money is dead. And it's, 
It means that their money is dead. That's what I heard. So their friends is money? Their friends is their money. And that, and that's worse. That's worse because, you know, you don't want to have the love of money because what is that going to do for you? Because you can say, okay, all my friends is dead. Okay. I'm thinking if you're saying my friends are dead and you're pushing me through the head, through the what now? What did you say in New York? Oh, edge. Then that means you push all your friends off the edge too. You know, that goes back to, you know, our, our last topic, you know. You know, uh, that goes back to another topic all in all. You know, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. That's back in the day. See, that's our version. You know, that was a message because I was close to the edge. And I do, I do want to say this on that note, even though we're talking about the new generation, like you said, uh, and, and we were talking about how that song that we were grew up on, Don't Push Me Because I'm Close to the Edge, Suicidal is real, but that's another topic. And that's what that was talking about. Do not push me. So it's a different than all my friends are dead. We weren't thinking about no money because we didn't have no money. We only had trying to make a dollar and 15 cents. And that's another topic, but I'm about to pass it to my girl, Lisa. Um, I really don't have any. Um, I don't have any comments really on the new music. I don't listen to the new music. I don't like my grandchild to listen to the new music um, because there's no message there. Um, actually, if there was no words, I would enjoy it much better. I think the beats are nice. You can get down in a club, and I think that's what most young people listen to. They're get in the club and they're listening to this. They've had a few drinks and they're shouting out the words, but not really comprehending what's being said. Uh, or listening to what's being said. Um, but I think if they put two and two together, they would be like, huh? What did they just say? Did I hear that correct? Because it's, it just doesn't make sense. All right. Y'all heard it from the ladies first. But we're going to take two, and we'll be back after this message. Hey, this is Happy Hour Chicks. Make sure you tune in on YouTube. Subscribe, comment, and like on YouTube. This is Frank Nitty of Frank Nitty TV. Thanks for watching. I'm looking for more rap artists, more rock and roll artists, country, blues, whatever music you're doing, I'm interested in coming out to see you. You can reach me at frankw3 at gmail.com. Don't hesitate, I won't be late. I'm ready to get at you. If you need to reach my buddy, that's also a part of my show, Reggie Reg, you can reach him at reggieuncle at yahoo.com. We're looking forward to working with you. All right, back to the show. All right, we're back. All right, so y'all heard what happened. Okay, so uh, we got the lyrics, we got Jay-Z, all these good things, and um, your comments are welcome. We look forward to it. Now, I was just watching our president, President Donald Trump, President Donald J. Trump, to be correct. Um, he launched a new uh, rule for the military, and what they're gonna do now is they're gonna stop transgenders from being in the military. So I wanna hear your thoughts on it. I'm not gonna get my thoughts until I hear your thoughts, right? <laughs> but uh, we're gonna start with uh, Alicia this time. We'll give her an opportunity. We'll start, we'll start from the right to the left, right? So let's get it started. Here you go. Um, I think that anyone that wants to be um, a part of the military, um, let, them, let them do it. Um, not many of us want to join the military. It can kind of be a scary thought with someone else really controlling all your actions, where you live, where you, where you work, you know, uh, where you sleep, and you could possibly die in war. So I think that anyone who's brave enough to sign up for it, just let them have it. Let them go at it. I mean, they're still a person. Um, they just identify differently, and people are just different. Um, they, I think. Just to be honest, I think that transgenders have always been in the military. It's just that it's just being identified now. Uh, we just talk about it out loud now. Nothing is new. Nothing that we talk about now is new. It's been existing for hundreds and hundreds of years. Nothing is new. Um, so I think if that's what they want to do, it's all good. I agree with Alicia. Uh, we are human beings. Um, it has been going on. But I'm sure before of our knowledge, 
Uh, if you're fighting for our country, we need as many as we get. Exactly. We need all the Army, Air Force, Marines, Navy, uh, if I left anything else out, but Army, we need all of them. Um, so if that's what you feel you can do and it's going to help benefit our country, we need as many as we can. So um, this is a free country. So you are free to do what you need, want to do. And no man or no woman can stop that. I'm going to pass it on. I have to say I'm going to agree on this one. Um, I feel like we need as many people as possible if they want to fight. They want to be in the military, let them do it. I don't see no reason to hold them back. Okay, so the lady's saying that they think that it's, it's fine, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it back around to them because I can't let them off the hook that easy. Okay, so, so if, if, if and, and that's fine. You should be able to fight, but here's the question that I have here. If you don't know who you are and you have a problem identifying oneself from what oneself was born with. And in the military, you got to depend on someone that is a mind, a sound mind. To me, that, that person may not have a sound mind and may need additional mind therapy. So you have someone out there that's either a woman or that thinks they're a man or a man that thinks they're a woman. And so now we have these, these cross different locations and so now we have a confused person out there on the battlefield. And on the battlefield, you can't have anyone that's confused. So if they're confused in one aspect of their life, this could be a confused aspect of anything else that's going on out there because the military is a serious situation. Now, of course, you can do what you want. That's America. And you have, you're free to do as you want. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about someone in the military preparing to fight for the country for the war who hasn't made their mind up yet? They say this is what they are, but they could change tomorrow because we know that there's a mind condition. Do y'all think? Well, do? If that's if if that's there's women and men already in the military. It's been like that, so we can't just say, "Oh, a transgender. What are we gonna do? It's transgender." No, we don't know. Identified as yes. Yes. transgender, yes. then yes. they've made their decision. Yes. I am now yes. wanting to be who yes. this who I am now. People who haven't made their decision are not transgender yet, and they're not identifying as transgender. They're just who they are, and they're not out, and nobody knows about it yet, because you're right, they're still stuck whether or not they're ready to move forward in that position. Yeah. But once they step into it, and they've, they've labeled themselves, they are who they are. They have said who they want to be. So there's no confusion. OK, well. Evaluations before they even get started out there, though. There's a whole, yeah, there's a whole process, whether you're transgender or not transgender, you go through a whole psych evaluation and they do make sure that you're capable of being in that kind of situation beforehand. Right. So you ladies are telling me, and of course I'm going to go a little deeper. So you're comfortable <laughs> with the dude that's now a lady, right? And so you're comfortable with him being with you in the locker rooms and, and, and all these different things. Is that what I'm hearing? Anybody different? No, I didn't say that. Oh, okay, well, this, but, well, hold on now, my sister. Hold on now. <laughs> this is part of the deal. This is where I'm going to. See, see, you're in a war. You're out on the field. So you have to be comfortable with them being a woman now. So that means you're okay with them being in there with you while you're doing woman things. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to pass the mic back around to those that may have a change of heart. So I'm going to pass the mic back to my sister half pint who just came out and said, well, I'm not cool with that. Yeah. Well, if you ain't cool with that, then you ain't cool with the being in the military. I want to hear what you got to say. But that's, that's, like, that's like a conflict. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I said, I, I'm cool with it. But I have to say, it's no buzz to it. I will have to say that. I will just have to ignore it. I, I'm just, I will just have to ignore it if they're sitting, standing by me. You know, if I be surprised. I mean, I'm not looking at them. 
you know, hey, go for it, do what you need to do if I was next to them in the military. But I'm not in the military. All I'm doing is speaking of in the same, in my same area, no, I, I cannot agree with that. But the military, if that's what they want to do, I am freedom of speech on that one. I can't say that. But standing next to me, that's a different, that's, a, that's something I will have to um, continue to, um, this is happy hour. <laughs> so I'm going to pass the mic right now because I want to continue to be in happy. <laughs> I still agree that anyone who wants to join the military can join the military. Hell, I'm not comfortable with being in a room with some women mm. that I know who are all women. I, I don't trust all of them. I mean, I, you know, just like you don't trust, you don't trust every, anybody and everybody. So if it's a male, you, you have nice men. Um, it, it, it just, you have to look at, I think, the bigger picture of it all. Um, I, just, I just think, yes, they still should join. Uh, whatever your discomfort level is, you may have to work on that because people are different. Um, you work every day with different people. You got to learn to deal with that. Um, especially with women, we're usually in more compromised situations than men at any given day. You might be the only lady at your job and you have to deal with men all day long. I, I just think it's kind of a similar way. You just learn to deal with it and you learn to deal with hell, just working with a whole bunch of women. That can be a nightmare all in itself. Um, so I think it's something that can be dealt with. All right, well, you know, I had to throw it out there. I wanna, I wanna put the ladies under, under the pressure pipe and uh, we got half pint to burst <laughs> real good. <laughs> she said she's not good with a transgender with her, next to her in the military, and that's okay. And it's okay to have your opinion, but Alicia is fine. And I think Brandy jumped off the train real quick. She don't want to comment. No, I'm fine with that. She's fine with it. Okay, so she says she's fine with she's it. She's fine with us. She fine. She's okay. okay. fine with okay. us using okay. the same facility. She's saying it. Okay. I'm good with that. I'm all right. Yeah. She good. Okay, and it's cool. And that's all right. You transgender. You turn into a woman. You interested in men. You're not interested in me. We good. <laughs> We good. Okay, so she's comfortable, and that's okay, and that's the thing about it. And, and one thing I will say on this, it's America, so it's legal, right? So if it's legal, then it's legalized. But again, our president feels that it's not a comfortable situation for our soldiers, and I support our, our president's decision because I do back our president in his decision. That's why we elected him as our leader of the free world. All right, we're going to move on. All right, here we go. Um, we're going to talk about smoking. Is the poor and rural habit smoking cigarettes let's be exact they're saying now if you smoke cigarettes this is for poor people in the rural areas the rich have overcome cigarettes now this is not their problem no more <laughs> it is only the poor and unfortunate so I want to hear your comments on that how do you feel about that do you think that I mean I everybody I know is poor right so and <laughs> I see a whole lot of smokers but I will hear what you guys say. I'm a hey, this is D-Town. Thank you for watching Happy Hour Chicks. We need you to subscribe and watch us on YouTube. <laughs> to compare the two, I think that's kind of ridiculous. But um, I believe smoking is more of a older people thing. Before we knew all the chemicals that were in the cigarettes, before we were aware of that, a lot of people were smoking, pretty much everybody was smoking cigarettes back then before we knew what was actually in it. And those people done developed a habit and they're still smoking. I don't, you don't see too much of the younger generation smoking cigarettes. Um, I don't flip flop from lower class to upper class area, so I couldn't do the comparison of who's smoking cigarettes and who's not. Um, so I'm a little out of that topic, maybe. I'll take the mic. Thank you, know. you very much. <laughs> However, uh, half pint right back at you. <laughs> However, um, <laughs> to each his own. Because <laughs> we all have to go from some from from somewhere from one day. Um, I think the secondhand smoke is worse than anything. Um, because it could come from anywhere through wherever it's at, the secondhand smoke. However, to each is on. I'm not going to judge anyone of 
how they're sick, like you said, the, the, the older generation back in the day, they didn't know what was going on, they didn't know anything. Um, you know, you got you got things that are out there that's much worse. So um, to each is on, and we're just gonna pass the mic on, half fine right at you. Um, I don't really have a comment on that either. Um, it's, I'm like Brandy, I can't really compare. Um, I see young people smoking. Um, I know some older people who smoke. Um, it's just a nasty habit for anyone. Um, but if that's what you want to do, if that's going to help you make it through the day, um, do you, I, you know. I, I think the ladies. <laughs> we all got nervous. We all have nervous uh, conditions, and however you got to do to smooth that nervousness, <laughs> do you? Do you, boo? <laughs> do you? However you got to do it, you know. I'd rather you smoke a cigarette than do anything else. I, I, I that's just me. Um, that's just my opinion. Um, if that's gonna calm down your nerves or whatever you're gonna do, you might gotta go use the bathroom, boo boo, or something like that. <laughs> Whatever's gonna make you use, you know, make you mentally, physically, you know, uh, do what you need to do. I understand that. So I wanna pass the mic back to the host, because he's a great host, and it's happy hour, pinky to you. <laughs> No doubt. So the ladies, the ladies, you know, I think they, they heard the question. Um, but really, what I want, really, just putting the emphasis on is that they're saying that the poor and unfortunate in the rural areas is now their issue with smoking. The rich have overcome this, and so how can the poor and the unfortunate overcome smoking? I understand you feel that it's okay. This may be what you need to do if you're nervous. But this is a serious issue because. Um, Smoking causes heart condition issues. It causes cancers. And, and we're always the ones that's dying here in the poor area. I mean, what can we do? What programs? Does anybody have any idea what we can do to get where the rich are? Or is it a rich? Quit selling them cigarettes for 25 cents. Quit selling them cigarettes for 25 cents at the local stores. I ain't going to say no names. 25 cents. 25 cents. Well, shoot, you might as well go and buy a pack. <laughs> 25 cent, you gonna come out with, and, and, and I wanna say, you know, <laughs> that 25 cent got to go. 25% off everything must go. But I understand that, I understand what you're trying to do, but that's not doing the right thing. If you wanna sell something for 25 cent, sell some chips, sell some fruit, sell something that's gonna, that, that's gonna help, uh, help the, the poor, like you said, in the communities. Because the rich, hey, the rich ain't worried about a cigarette, okay? Half pint, right at you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies. All right, we're gonna be back after this message. All right, thank you. Rolling, turn it off. <laughs> so silly. Hey, this is Happy Hour Chicks. Make sure you tune in on YouTube. Subscribe, comment, and like on YouTube. This is Frank Nitty of Frank Nitty TV. Thanks for watching. I'm looking for more rap artists, more rock and roll artists, country, blues, whatever music you're doing, I'm interested in coming out to see you. You can reach me at frankw3 at gmail.com. Don't hesitate. I won't be late. I'm ready to get at you. If you need to reach my buddy, that's also a part of my show, Reggie Reg, you can reach him at reggieuncle at yahoo.com. We're looking forward to working with you. All right, back to the show. All right, we're back. All right. Okay, so we talked a little bit about uh, the uh, smoking. And it looks like uh, hopefully the hood can get it together, basically. Watch the rich. They stop, quit, throw the cigarettes away, stop smoking. Right. It's not good for you. Right. You've seen, the, com you seen the commercial with the lady that uh, where she's talking out of the throat now. So if you smoke the cigarettes, take that message serious. I want you to really think about it. All right, here we go. Um, I want to talk about Cosby, Bill Cosby. Uh, he, uh, the first trial was a mistrial. Um, do you ladies feel that this man is free? I mean, not free, but is he, is he innocent? Or, I mean, um, 
is did he do a crime? What's really going on with Bill Cosby? I mean, this brother is now under trial at 100 years old. <laughs> I mean, let's just keep it real. He's a, he's 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 under under investigation at 100 years old about you know giving women a drink to you know. But here's my thing: the women go back. So I'm trying to figure out how do you take a man to trial and you know that what is he, what is what he's doing, but you keep going back. Y'all thoughts. I want to hear y'all thoughts. We're going to start with Brandy. My first thought is what in the world took them so long to come forward about it? I mean, if this is what happened to you, why wait 30 years? What was the first one? About 30 years. Why would you wait that long before you come forward about a situation like that? Because the money stopped flowing. They get right. checked. They were getting checked. That's he, right. It happened. As soon as he fired his manager, mm -hmm. they had been there for years. The money stopped being the check stopped being. Well, they cut. can't. They, she can't. So they, they can't came hear forward. you. Mm -hmm. Here, here, they can't hear you. Everything started happening right after he fired his manager, who had been his manager for years. So the only thing I can think of is that the check stopped being cut. People not get money anymore, so you're gonna pay a different way. If the money was still flowing, we wouldn't have never heard about it. Right. I just believe that to this day because at the end of the day, that's what most people want. And I'm not saying that um, what he did or what he was accused of, if he did do it, that it wasn't wrong. But what I am saying is, just like you said, why did you wait 30 years if you felt like you were so wrong? Or, or, you know, if you felt like he had violated you in any kind of way. What were you there for? Well, yeah. Well, I mean, why you come? Hi, Pine on the scene. Uh, check this out real quick. If it ain't about the money, don't be blowing up. So they shouldn't have been getting up. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. It's all about the money. And then, like like you said, you, uh, like everyone is saying, you took the money. You're not getting the money anymore. So let's rehash things back up. That's not a good idea. So you wait till he's 99.99 .99 years old. You know what I'm saying? That's like 100 degrees outside down in the south. It's too late. The man can barely see. He can't walk. He got to have a guide. All that. So, I mean, why? Why now? The money stopped. It's all about the money, that mighty dollar. What you think? I wouldn't even entertain it as a judge. Yeah. Um, I would just feel yeah. like they just waited too long. Um, if the situation affected them that much, they should have came forward many years ago. Mm -hmm. And... If it was about the money, then the situation didn't affect them. I mean, they can't go off of the mental issue or the, the stress from the situation. Um, they just say thank you for what they received and keep it moving. Hey, y'all heard it. Not me. The ladies feel, uh, hey, Cosby is a good deal for you, brother. Uh, you didn't, you know, not saying that you're innocent, but saying that, hey, this situation is way outdated. And since, since money stopped, it was all about the money to start with, then, I mean, you have no case. And I think that's the reason why the first case you know was a mistrial. There's no jello without no pudding. That's all I want to say. There's no jello without no pudding. <laughs> Half pint. <laughs> yeah, no jello without no pudding. Bet that. Half pint in the building, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You know what? I, just one more thing. I was just thinking about, I mean, at the height of his career, when right. he had the Cosby show, when he had all these shows going on, the kids, the, right. kids, the commercials, all these different things, at no point at the height of his career did you say, let me say something now. I mean, why not then? Because that's really when the money was flowing. So, obviously, you were being taken care of at the time. I mean, obviously. Yeah. Absolutely. So, hey, hey, ain't nobody blind here at this table. <laughs> I mean, and just talking about superstars or, or famous people, I want to go into a brother, OJ, the juice. The juice is now free. Well, he will be soon. He'll be let out of jail. I'm sure he'll be on probation of some type, you know. I mean, it's been a long time. I think he had a, you know, I mean, he did go in there and try to take his own memorabilia 
billable. Oh, God, I done messed that up real big time, right? <laughs> You're right, it's memorabilia. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's old stuff that, that really was his stuff that was sitting in that pawn shop, but that was not the right thing to do. You know, like we teach our t kids, you can't go do things that, that if it's not right, even though it's yours, you, you got to go about the right way about getting it. But he did a hefty, I mean, use that word hefty time for that. I mean, he's been in jail for quite some time. And so the juice is now going to be free. I'm sure we'll see him on TV doing some type of interview. Hopefully he doesn't say anything stupid. And I hope he's watching. Don't do anything or say anything stupid, Juice. Okay. And I, I want to know, I'm going to start with Alicia this time. I want to know your thoughts on the juice being free. I mean, it's been a long time. Um, what you got? Um, you did the crime. If you did and you did the time, it's time for you to um, start a new life and um, start over again. And like you said, hopefully in his um, interviews, he doesn't say anything stupid, um, that he's learned and that he's grown um, while he's served his time. And um, it's time for him just to begin his life again and, and move on. OJ. No, I love me some OJ. I love orange juice. What I need for you, it's time for you to settle down. Cause you about to be 99.99 .99 years old. It's time for you to sit down and relax, get your mind right, get you some jello pudding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> OJ, the ultimate. Get your new Hertz commercial. You know, carry the luggage instead of running over it. Carry the luggage. Get paid. Get paid. Get paid, OJ. But get paid the nice way, and 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 take your time and and and, and enjoy your freedom. I don't have too much to say about that. Um, I've never really been an OJ fan. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but he's free. He's free. All right. Well, Juice, uh, you heard from the ladies. Uh, we want you to do the right thing. Keep it moving. Um, we appreciate you. We, we still love you here in the hood in the community. Uh, again, you know, when you get out, do some things in the community, show your face, show your face in the hood as well. You've been getting hood love since the uh, the OJ trial, so make sure you come back and do the right thing. You know, I'm just keeping it 1,000. All right, well, that's going to wrap up what we got going here today. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. This is just our first taping. We'll have another taping coming up sh real shortly. Um, and, um, I, I, again, Introducing the ladies, you got Brandy, Half Pine, Alicia. Um, we got some winners here. Um, I know you're gonna. We got more topics and more things to talk about. We want to hear from you. Uh, you got ladies. Got anything you want to say? You want any exit before before we sign out? I just want to sign out to my girls. Hi, happy hour. Make sure you get a bottle of water. <laughs> uh, my girls, come on, tune in. Let's get a big hug. It's happy hour. We all in this together. This is my girl, New York in the house. My girl, Leisha in the house. And, of course, this is Half Pint. I'm giving the mic back to my co-host. Peace out. No doubt. All right, we'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for tuning. Make sure you subscribe and like. We want to hear from you. All right, we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>